Hi, Gail. Uh, welcome to the Diversity Talks. Um, I am so happy to have you as my guest today. Uh, you are a very good colleague of mine. We both graduated in the same year uh, from Columbia, Columbia University's advanced level coaching program in New York. And, and I must say that at that time, I was very impressed by your finishing thesis, which was, um, which was about you know, why organizations should assign coaches to people of color early in their, in their career. Um, Gail, you're an executive coach working with managers and VPs in different sectors in the United States. And you mostly work with um, people of color. You offer both team coaching, leadership coaching, and you also have a background in HR. So my first question to you is, from your perspective, what is the situation? Uh, regarding diversity and inclusion in organizations? And where do you see, where do you detect problems? Okay. Well, first, I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you too. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this conversation. So thank you for, um, for inviting me to join you, okay? Thank you. Um, and, and the other thing, you know, as I, I was listening to you, to the question, the other thing that came to mind for me was, you know, we're just a few days into Black History Month. Mm. And when I think about diversity, right, there's so many aspects to diversity. But I think given that it's Black History Month and given also that from my own personal perspective around diversity, I see race as being like that predominant aspect of diversity. It's like the thing that hits you first, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think I'll, I'll answer the question about what's happening around diversity and inclusion today from that perspective, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, thinking about 2020, right? We had, you know, the pandemic started in 2020. We had economic downturn that resulted from that. We also saw in the beginning of, in the late spring, um, where there was this shifting that, that happened. Um, I guess it was early summer, the shifting that happened around the growing support for the Black Lives Matter movement following the, the killing of George Floyd, which we all witnessed, right? It was witnessed around the world. It was one of those things that it, it couldn't be unseen by anyone. And I think here in, in America, it, it, it put race front and center for the nation, but I think it also did that for corporate America as well. And, um, and so what we saw coming out of that was companies making public pledges. Right. You heard them talking about reaffirming their commitment to diversity, making financial donations, um, inviting conversations about race. And like those kinds of responses and have their place, right? But until, until organizations are willing to acknowledge that racism exists and it's real and people feel it every day, um, not only outside in the larger society, but also within the organization itself. I, I, don't, I just don't think things will, things will change enough. Um, it, it's where, it's where, we need more than we need more than the words and we need more than the good intentions right of of what organizations want to do we need them to take that hard look inside and 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 do that work around diversity and equity and inclusion and to do that it, it's the same story we we know to be true it's the leadership that has to lead the way 
It's the C-suite that needs to come to this in a different way, um, more than their words, but with actions and actions around things that make a difference, policies, practices, expectations, accountability. Those are the things that are important uh, for making the workplace different for people. And so I think when you think about what can happen relative to diversity and inclusion, I think that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Gail, where, where do you detect problems in organizations? I mean, you mentioned that we need to accept that racism exists. So mm -hmm. is this something which is not happening in organizations? What is it which is not working yeah. in organizations? Yeah, I, I, I think organizations are no different than people, right? Because people make up those organizations in, in, in the sense that when you think about something like that, it, that willingness to acknowledge racism, um, people need to acknowledge that, right? And I think that's a hard thing for people to do. And so I think that's, that's part of the problem, right? And we, we kind of, for years, we've been, you know, pushing diversity initiatives, right? But initiatives are not enough. You have to make those systemic changes within the organization around the policies and practices. Mm -hmm. And Gail, when, when you, I, I said earlier that you, um, you offer coaching, leadership coaching, team coaching, and you mostly work with uh, people of color. What do you notice if I ask you to put your coaching hat on, <laughs> so coach hat on, sorry. Mm -hmm. what, what do you notice about their needs? The reason why I'm asking you this question is diversity is all about acknowledging, recognizing and embracing differences. So when you think about your coaches, do they want their differences to be acknowledged or ignored? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think, I think people want, I think it's somewhere in between, <laughs> right? I think it's about being accepted for who they are, right? So you don't, you don't want your differences to be to be constantly being called out, right? But you also don't want them to be ignored, right? Because if they're, igno if they're ignored, it, it feels like your uniqueness doesn't matter, right? And who you are doesn't matter. Um, and so I think it, it's really about that, that being accepted, right? It's, Oh, what's the best way to, to kind of to kind of think about that? It's it's not needing, not feeling that you need to change how you're showing up. Mm -hmm. And I think all too often for people of color that happens, where there's like there's like a mold of what what you need to be like in order to be successful. And that may mean that you're feeling that. Parts of you aren't good enough. You can't show up as your full self. And, um, and, and that carries a burden um, for people um, because you're, you're, you're hiding part of you, right? And, and there's been you know, different, different studies that have been done around that, right? Um, and been called lots of different things. It's been called covering. It's been called masking. Um, code switching, like these are some of the terms that, you know, I recall, you know, hearing, you know, when I, when I read different things, but it's really just plain and simple, hiding some aspect of yourself. And, and that's a hard thing. Um, I even, re I can even remember for myself, um, early in, in my career, right? My husband and I were both early in our careers. That's what we were like up and comers, right? And, um, but something we would joke about as we would leave the house sometimes would be, all right, time to put, time to put the white on because it was a different way we needed to behave, a different way we needed to make sure we were speaking, um, not being our natural full self. And 
I think the same thing still exists based on some of the things I hear from my clients. Um, you know, even, even things as simple as, you know, for, for a, a woman to need to think about, you know, okay, I'm going on an interview. Do I relax my hair or do I leave my hair natural the way I've been wearing it? You know, what's gonna be more acceptable to the person who's interviewing me? You know, that, that shouldn't be a question. Right. Um, and so, you know, so I, so I think that's where you want the acceptance. Embrace, like you said, you want your differences to be embraced and accepted as opposed to this thing that makes you feel different. Um, and no one wants to feel different. And, I, and, and one of the, one of the, the things that, that always, I guess, a pet peeve of mine is around the use of the term diverse um, because of the way it gets used. Uh, when it's used to say, you know, I'm a, you know, if it's about me, that someone might say, you know, she's a diverse candidate, right? Um, am I, why are you saying I'm different? I'm not a different candidate, right? Diverse means we're different from each other right, to me. And to call someone diverse, now you're saying, ah, oh, you're different. And so that's why I say, I don't think people want the difference acknowledged in that way. They want to be accepted. Thank you, Gail. This that is- makes sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, very good clarification. Um, Gail, don't you, don't you see any progress in that regard, I will. I know that you have got two daughters, and and both of them are in you know corporate life. And uh, what is different in their life comparing to your life thirty years ago? Yeah, uh, certainly, certainly some progress, right? Um, but there's still a lot to be done. There's still a lot to be done. Um, you know that um, I think compared to thirty years ago. I think younger people today have more opportunity to see themselves um, represented higher at higher levels within the organization. Um, and even if it's not within their organization, they, they, they just know that that's happening, right? Um, and so it also, it, it, it helps them to be able to, to see where they can go Right. It also even maybe even touching people a little even earlier than that first job, maybe even when they're in college. Oftentimes professors will be coming out of corporate roles and, and they start to teach um, and they're bringing that experience. And that's something that um, even those students can talk about. Right? So they can begin to understand what kind of opportunities exist for them career-wise. They can begin to think about you know, what a career path might look like for them. And the same holds true for people in their earlier career or as they're progressing in their career. So seeing that representation becomes important. Um, and I think there is more of that today. That's great. <laughs> Yeah. At least, yeah, there is there's some progress in, yes. in that regard. Yes. But I am also curious to know what needs to be done in organizations. So uh, what, can, what can be done in organizations to make people feel they are ex accepted as the way they are? Hmm. Well, I think, I think, you know, some of it is about I'm thinking about you know some of the things that 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 clients talk to me about, um, in terms of you know oftentimes they they're wondering you know just for themselves you know why is it that their career or the careers of people who look like them aren't progressing in the same way as maybe their white colleagues? So they see people whose careers are moving, moving much faster. They're getting those promotions much sooner. Um, they may have started 
together in the organization, or they may be looking at peers of theirs that they went to school with, either college or grad school, and, and they're seeing these, these people's careers move faster. And so um, a piece of it is around, you know, where's the support for them? You know, I think, you know, that, that's, that's a piece of it, um, of what could be different. Um, more support for them in terms of, you know, mentors, um, sponsors, people who really care about them as a person and helping them to navigate moving forward in their career uh, so that they are, they become more aware of opportunities and not just job opportunities, but also opportunities for development programs. Oftentimes they may not even know that some of these programs exist or that they're eligible for them. And they, they have to find these things out on their own as opposed to someone guiding them towards those, those kinds of opportunities. So, um, so I think um, having more support for them, um, I think, you know, when you think about like what I talked about before around um, needing to make some decisions around your, your style and how you show up at work, you know, that that's where coaches can come in, mm -hmm. right, and, and help someone because again, that's a hard, it's a hard thing to come to terms with that, you know, what do you mean I can't be myself, right? Um, and so helping them to kind of Think about where's the balance around that? Where, where can you adjust your style without giving up who you are? Mm -hmm. and, and, and your identity. Yeah, yeah yes. And, and helping to work through you know, those kinds of things with people. Um, and, and again, it, it still gets back to what's the company willing to acknowledge and what actions are they willing to take? You know, are they willing to acknowledge that all the isms that exist outside of their organization also exist inside? And are, you know, are the, uh, is the leadership of the organization, and again, talking about that C-suite, are they willing to make those changes around policies, practices, um, and cultural norms? So that um, there is this opportunity for diversity, inclusion, and, and equity to become more of the reality of, of being more of the norm as opposed to the exception. My understanding from you is acceptance lies in the heart of this diversity, inclusion, and, and equity. Mm. Yeah, it, it, acceptance and, and making those choices around making those changes of, around how things are done. Because we can't change people, right? People are themselves and we can't change their beliefs and their views and all of those things, right? But what we can change are the the way the processes around which they get to operate mm -hmm. and that's the the policies and the practices mm -hmm. right that's where you can you can that's where you can level the playing field gail thank you so much uh, our time is up is, there, is it <laughs> <laughs> time is flying <laughs> every time i get this reaction is there anything else that you would like to say before i i close this session um just to kind of just reiterate like what i said that you know there's so there, I, I just think there's so much possibility right now um in this diversity equity inclusion space and we just, we need to seize that um, by taking that hard look at what kind of workplace are we creating for people? And, and how, can we, how can we make the right changes that allow for the playing field to be level 
and where people can feel comfortable being themselves. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your oh, time, so for your welcome. valuable input and um, stay safe and take care. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>